You're about to embark on the study of physiology, not super in-depth, but an introduction to physiology. And we wanted to prepare you for that, to provide you a roadmap of sorts as to what you're going to learn throughout this course. There will be a theme that will go through most of the course. The first uh, theme is homeostasis. Homeostasis is about the balance in the body. And if we think about a seesaw like this, and with a weight on either end of the seesaw, something happens to the body, causing, for example, this side to go down and this side to go up. And the body has to operate within relatively narrow parameters. And so it does an adjustment that ultimately will bring this one back down here and this one back up again and tries to maintain that relatively narrow physiologic range. So that theme of homeostasis will go through much of what you learn. The other theme is about the contrast between steady state and dynamic conditions. Think about a graph that has two axes. One axis is time, and the other axis is some parameter that you're following. And you may be in this nice homeostatic level where things are nice and steady, and then something happens to the body and this parameter changes, and the body makes adjustments sometimes, not bringing it back all the way to where it was before, but at least getting us back into a new level. And so we now think about this part and this part as being steady state. The parameter, the level of that parameter is constant with time. And we contrast that with this area here, which is the dynamic condition when the amount of Y or the status of Y is changing over time uh, until the body again can reestablish steady state conditions. So these are two themes that will go through much of what you learn. Now we're going to focus on three organ systems in this introduction to physiology. The respiratory system, which involves the lungs and the chest wall and oxygen and carbon dioxide. The cardiovascular system, which is about the heart pumping blood through blood vessels. And the renal system, it's about the kidneys and how the kidney helps adjust fluids and acids and other elements within the body. So let's start out thinking briefly about the respiratory system. There's some controller that tells you how rapidly and how deeply to breathe. And this sends messages to something called the ventilatory pump. The muscles of breathing like the diaphragm, the rib cage, and the other elements of the chest wall. Now the cardiovascular system also has a pump, which is the heart. And of course the heart pumps blood through the blood vessels. Now, if we think about the pump itself, we have to concern ourselves with issues of compliance, how stiff is the heart, as well as something called transmural pressure. What is the pressure across the wall of the pump, which has an effect on the size or volume of the pump? In the same way, when we're talking about the respiratory pump, we also have to consider issues about compliance, in this case, compliance or stiffness of the lungs and the chest wall. And we also have to consider issues of transmural pressure, the pressure in this case across the lung, which will determine the size of the lung as well. Now, if I have a pump, what am I pumping through? In this case, the airways. And so I get flow through tubes that I have to consider. And with the cardiovascular system, I again also have flow through tubes. In this case, they're blood vessels. But the same principles you're going to be learning about flow through tubes apply to both systems. So now we think about principles that are common to both, like resistance and turbulent flow and driving pressures. So these are all concepts that you'll be learning about that will help you understand the flow through tube. Now, if we go back to the cardiovascular system for a moment, when we talk about this, we will be considering oxygen delivery to the tissue, a major function of the cardiovascular system. That will bring us to considerations of exercise, what happens when we set the body uh, in motion. We will then have to consider issues of supply and demand. Your tissues demand oxygen to support aerobic metabolism. Uh, but in some cases, 
when we can't support aerobic metabolism anymore and we become anaerobic, then we wind up developing metabolic acid. And we'll have some discussion about that. On the respiratory side, the ventilatory pump again has flow through tubes. In this case, they go to alveoli, the gas exchanger unit. And so we now have to consider issues about gas exchange. And this brings us to considerations of oxygen and carbon dioxide. And to understand both of those, again, we have a common principle that will come out, uh, which is partial pressure, which tells us about the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood. Both of these gases have different interactions with hemoglobin, which is important as well. Now, if I can't get carbon dioxide out of the body, I develop a respiratory acid. So we talked briefly before about metabolic acids. In this case, we will be talking about respiratory acids. And this will feed into the kidney in terms of compensation in the same way that the metabolic acids will also have an effect to some degree on renal function or the kidney will help us to uh, deal with that. The kidney has other functions related to salt and water, which leads to an understanding of fluid compartments. And as we think about fluid compartments, we will also have to consider issues like hydrostatic pressure. So flow through tubes, particularly in the cardiovascular system, will lead us to a discussion of hydrostatic pressure and how that affects the movement of fluid into the various compartments. So now we've provided you with an overview of these three organ systems, renal, respiratory, and cardiovascular. And we've given you a sense of the various topics we will be addressing. And we want to always bring this back to a clinical perspective for you to understand how this is important uh, in the study of the body. Uh, and we want to continually emphasize as well the integrative nature of these organ systems. Again, reminding you about these two major themes, homeostasis and steady state versus dynamic conditions. I want you now to enjoy your ride as you enter into the study of physiology.